Tonight we report on an expected guilty plea to be entered by Nathan Brooks and a popular drive-in restaurant gets a new owner. What's happening in sports, Bob? Thanks, Alan. Moses Lake boys finish as district runner-up and the running Vikes beat Walla Walla in overtime. Here's a glance at our weather center forecast. Hello everyone, I'm Chastel Lynn Rodriguez. A series of systems will approach our area, bringing us a chance of snow and rain. I'll have more details for you in just a bit. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Nathan Brooks is expected to enter a guilty plea to charges related to shooting his parents in March 2013. Brooks, a 16-year-old Moses Lake boy, is presently facing two counts of attempted murder in the first degree and unlawful possession of a firearm. He was scheduled to go to trial on Wednesday. The attorneys told visiting Douglas County Superior Court Judge John Hotchkiss on Monday morning that they had reached a resolution. The attorneys didn't say what charges Brooks will plead guilty to at the next hearing. Sentencing is scheduled for the same day. Brooks is accused of shooting his parents on March 8, 2013. He reportedly admitted to prying open a gun safe, grabbing a pistol, and waiting in his bedroom for about 90 minutes before deciding whether he should shoot them. The boy allegedly sneaked into his parents' bedroom and began shooting, hitting his father once and his mother twice. Brooks was reportedly upset after he was grounded and had his electronic devices taken away after receiving a detention for being late to class. A new marijuana growing operation is going up in Moses Lake. Last year, the city approved allowing grow operations in the city limits. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. Those greenhouses going up at the corner of Wheeler Road and State Route 17 are the first such marijuana production operations inside the city of Moses Lake. City planning staff said no building permits were required because the structures are considered agricultural greenhouses. Structures such as that are exempt from the building permit process under the city building code. So city information about the extent of the operation and how much marijuana will be produced is scarce. Grant County Assessor's Office records show the property of more than seven acres is owned by Kenneth Skolan and Chris Jen Enterprises LLC of Anchorage, Alaska. Attempts to contact Skolan in Alaska were unsuccessful. A spokeswoman with the Washington State Liquor Control Board said the marijuana production company is listed under the name of Raspberry LLC. She said the proposed Moses Lake Marijuana Greenhouse Growing Facility's state permit to operate is pending. The greenhouses are located in the vicinity of another marijuana production operation, which will be inside an existing building in the 1400 block of Wheeler Road. The Moses Lake City Council in September approved allowing marijuana growing operations within the city limits. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. A desert airman allegedly tried to rape a woman and stalked her for about nine months following the attack. Prosecutors charged Arnolfo Sanchez, a 44-year-old man, in Grant County Superior Court with attempted rape, burglary, stalking, and criminal trespass. Sanchez allegedly snuck into the victim's bedroom through a window on June 2nd while she was sleeping, locked her door, and tried to rape her. The victim woke up during the attack and was able to force Sanchez off of her. The victim reported seeing a man looking in her windows about a month after the attack. She believed the man was the same one that attacked her. Investigators believe it was Sanchez. He allegedly returned to the home on February 13th and February 15th and shined a flashlight through the window. The victim reportedly shined a flashlight back on the second inc incident and saw Sanchez. According to the State Bar Association, former prosecutor Angus Lee had multiple reasons he shouldn't have dealt with three cases in 2009. 
Mark Honeywell, the attorney representing the association's Office of Disciplinary Counsel, submitted his closing argument to the hearing officer. The attorney argued the former prosecutor should be either suspended from practicing law or reprimanded because he violated rules about handling cases where he had a conflict of interest. Honeywell argued Lee had a conflict of interest handling any cases dealing with former administrative assistant Kathleen Neals. For more information about what the closing statement contains, visit us online at www.i501.com news. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. And we'll be back right after this. <laughs> 